Uh, Garrett, thank you so much for your time here. So maybe not so unusual, but what is going on here? Is this really about delays with the outgoing crew that is right now still on Earth, or is this about something wrong with the incoming crew, which currently, you know, are stuck on the space station? Well, I, I definitely want to say this. It's nothing wrong with the crew members themselves. They're all very fine individuals, and they're, they're doing great. Uh, the problem is with the hardware. It's uh, SpaceX is making a fifth Dragon uh, spacecraft. There's four currently. And when you make a brand new one, sometimes it doesn't go exactly according to the schedule, and it takes a little bit longer than expected. So they're going to have a, an additional month or a little bit more on board the space station because of these hardware delays. But, uh, Nicole, I would classify this as kind of like one of the expected, unexpected delays. Uh, it's uh, kind of within the realm of our experience that uh, when you're building a new spacecraft that it takes a little bit longer than planned and doesn't come as a huge surprise. The initial, you know, going from eight days to what they thought was eight months at the time, that was a big deal. That was an unexpected, unexpected delay. But this one, uh, yeah, not that bad. So with all of these now continued delays, because again, this was originally supposed to be eight days, and you know, and knowing what you know when it comes to the inner workings of the space program, you are a former NASA astronaut. Does this concern you at all? Well, it, it, it doesn't concern me in the sense that um, it's the kind of thing that can happen. And uh, I think the most important thing is that they're putting safety first. So in my mind, that's a good thing. Uh, you know, they could have brought Sonny and, and Butch home in that Starliner, and it turned out that Starliner came home just fine. Uh, and, and they just wanted to be absolutely sure before they bet somebody's life on it that that thing was going to work. So I think they made the right call. And, uh, you know, if it was me, I would rather stay an additional, you know, uh, eight months or whatever I'm up in space than come home in a vehicle that I wasn't 100 percent confident in. So I think uh, uh, overall the decision making process at NASA has been good and, and proper. And I think Sonny, I think the hardest thing on Sonny and Bush was just a not knowing until waiting for NASA to make that decision, whether they would co come or or stay. Uh, I think that was actually the hardest part for them. Yeah, so so cool to look at this uh, these images as you're talking there. Do you think there's a chance that this return could be delayed yet again? How many more times uh, can it be delayed, or is it just a matter of you know as many as it takes, as long as it takes? As long as it takes. I mean, it's always it always is possible. I, I think that we're now because this is just talking about uh, integration of the hardware and the and the processing of the hardware once it arrives at the Cape. These are kind of manageable problems, scheduled problems. I don't anticipate this will be like another eight months on top of this or anything crazy like that. Um, there, there, you know, I, I think we're we're looking at April at the latest, and you know, maybe sliding another month tops. But I, I don't think that we're looking at like adding another half a year or anything like that. All right, now I have to ask you this question. Natasha, who is working on this story, doing some research, uh, has, has learned that apparently there are seven sleeping pods on the International Space Station. At one point, they were up to 10 people on board the ISS. So we're just asking you, Garrett, explain how that works. <laughs> seven pods, 10 people. Well, it's, it's nice having your own pod because you could put your pictures up and you could, like, have a little privacy and all that, but it's no big deal. I, when I was up there, I got bounced around like crazy. Uh, I, I slept in like four or five different compartments <laughs> while I was up there, and I never really had a permanent home, and that was fine. In fact, I kind of enjoyed it. It was like kind of, you know, going on vacation to an, another module. <laughs> so uh, you can put your sleeping bag anywhere, and uh, as as long as uh, you have, you know, your snacks and your uh, and your tunes, I, I think anywhere on the space station is a great place to be. That's a very good point. I think everybody probably has a good attitude being up there. Last question for you. Is there a scenario where there would maybe be some type of special mission specifically to get them off of the ISS? I mean, eventually you might hit career radiation limits. Now, uh, Sunny is approaching with this latest delay. I think she's going to be just a month or two short of Peggy's record for for Americans uh, in space as far as cumulative time. You showed that the, the, the single stay times is what you showed on that chart earlier. But if you add up all the time that Sunny's been in space, she's approaching Peggy's record of 675 days. Uh, she'll be a couple months shy of that, so I don't think it's going to be an issue. I don't think she's going to set the record. But eventually, it is possible you get to the point where you have to say, okay, we need to bring them home because uh, we, there's a limit to how much radiation they let us uh, uh, take.
Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your screen. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.